Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about probably the most interesting dialogue on TCG Player ever. So it is from a customer to give you a little bit of background. A customer leaves a four out of five star. Then the person responding the store or TCG Player says, hey, why did you leave a four out of five star? Can you leave a five star? And it's pretty normal. I'm just going to read it to you. Dear Mr. Blank, what can I do to improve your opinion of our company? I have a lot of resources to make you happy. So that's them. The customer, I'm not sure, not sure your concern. I gave you a four star rating. That should count as a positive score towards a 100% approval rating. Dear Mr. Blank, I have only received free four star ratings after 3,000 sales. That means that I did something wrong with you. You are the one in a thousand. What could I do in the future to ensure a five star rating? I am sorry if I did not provide you with a better condition card or free card. I have no problems sending anything you need to make up for my company's issues. Maybe a better condition card? Question mark. Regrets. Regrets. I usually just give a four star rating by default, saving five star ratings for orders that ship ahead of schedule. Uh, example, three days or in better condition than ordered. It doesn't mean something was done wrong. Everything was right, but it wasn't exceptional. It is what I expect from a seller, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll just give you a you the five stars. I can appreciate that you care about pleasing your customers that much. You are blocked. What? Dear Mr. Blank, as a result of your policy to give four star ratings, you will no longer be able to purchase from my store. View my ratings here from others, tcgplayer.com. You clearly didn't read my message wherein I said I would and already did give you a, the five star, but I am definitely changing my rating now. I have no intention of dealing with your passive aggressive behavior in the future. If you didn't want suggestions on how to improve your service, you shouldn't have asked for them. I load my rating here, which triggered a new Fred chain by TCG player. Dear blank blank, I am sorry for my passive aggressive behavior. Love. Okay, seriously, I gave him a perfect card and he wants to complain. We are very close to losing a partnership. Why have you been do me? do mean to me when I have made you so much money. What the, what is he talking about? Okay, it's pretty much going crazy. Your review is not for card quality, but your service. I accurately mark my review as the card being in the correct condition and arriving on time, but that your communication was not courteous. I think blackmailing users to give you ratings is immoral. Please don't spam my inbox of more pol impolite messages like this. I have been nothing but nice in my replies, going out of the way to give you in-depth explanations for how to improve your service as you asked of me. I even offered to give you the five-star rating, blank, blank, blank. They issued an unprovoked full refund at this point, triggering yet another Fred chain in which only they comment. Crats on your refund, you are good on scamming people. This guy gets free cards for being a jerk. Free cards for Charles. Amazing whiner. <laughs> hey Charles, are you happy with your order? Charles equal scammer. Glad you have people like this trying to rip me off. I am I pooking at other services now because of this buyer of yours. So he's going to look at Etsy and eBay and then he issued a refund and this argument was, and then he says, biggest complainer ever in the history of this website. Uh, the refund was for $9.72. This whole argument was for $9.27. So if you ask from a store perspective, I kind of get it but a, a review is always up to the customer. Even if you did your best, customer can give you a one-star review because they're douchebags, right? Like you can't stop that. It's their right to give you a review and that's the whole point. And a lot of times, actually, if someone has 3,000 reviews and they all have five stars and they have a, a perfect review 
I would be kind of suspect. I'd be like, oh, maybe there's fake reviews or something. But my point being in this whole dialogue, this was in 19, no, not 19, 2016, July 30, 2016 for $9.72. Was it worth the seller's time? No. Was it worth the buyer's time? No. But this is what you get online. And you might ask, why am I not selling my magic cards online? I just don't have any. I have sold and bought many cards online from Magic Online Trading League back in the day, which is now antiquated from pretty much it, it died. And I have always felt like there's so many. Okay, so when you're dealing with um, Amazon, for instance, uh, Amazon will do right by you if a package, is, I'm, none of my packages have ever gone missing for too long, but they do a good job talking to you, their customer service is 24 seven. And if you ever did lose a package, I would have no concern that they would replace the package for me. But when I was selling magic cards, I would get one out every 15 buys or sells would have a scammer or a scam like kind of technique going on and a lot of this had to do with uh, the time and a lot of these cards would spike in the mail or they would plummet in the mail so uh, that's the majority of deals that went poorly for me is when a card uh, would spike in the mail and then they would or someone I would buy a card expecting it to spike because I read about you know the deck tech or something and the internet was not as fast so if you kind of got you can get ahead of these things the seller would hold on to the card and wait for almost a week so they wouldn't send out the card they would wait for a week then the card would go up then they would can't uh cancel the order and say that they didn't find a card anymore or the card went down they would send the card right away after a week so this is a problem that i used to face all the time was with uh sellers and mostly sellers holding cards for way too long because they expect something to happen to your card. And a lot of times they actually did happen to a card. But this is over $9. Uh, magic players is just typically, especially like you have to value your time. Nine seventy two dollars is what you make one hour at Walmart. Was this worth the stress? Was this worth the anger? Was this worth the, you know, needing to post on Reddit? All, like, I don't think so because you could have just worked one hour at Walmart and made up the $10, right? In this case, the person who got the card got the free card and also got the refund. So it was actually a $20 boon for him. But as the store side, you know, you lost $20. That's okay. You're a store. You can make it up. Uh, the refund, I definitely would not have issued a refund after he gave me a one-star review. Uh, it's because that's not going to help and he'll only use it against you. So sometimes we do online reputation management at my company. We don't charge for it, but when a client is in kind of uh, dire straits, sometimes we'll help. We'll send our social media team to help them. It's tough. You know, it is tough because a lot of times when you talk about Yelp and fake review, review manipulation, they, they were sued in New York State. Uh, and I think they lost. I don't know. I didn't, haven't followed a case, but for fake reviews. And so, I mean, you got a ton of things going on here, which, you know, affects TCG player. And then why would you say, okay, why does is this seller so adamant on that five star review, having all 3,000 be a five star review? is because then he's ranked higher that people will buy from him more. So it does affect sales. Uh, it's kind of a sad system. And that's why I don't sell on TCG player. I don't. So if you ask, have I ever sold on TCG player? Absolutely not. I, my time is more valuable than getting into arguments like this. And I guarantee you knowing my nature, I will get into arguments like this. Uh, do I have a Pico trade account? Never. Cause I knew it was a Ponzi scheme. Like, a pyramid or a triangle, whatever you want to define it. It's some type of scammy scheme. It's a lot better now from what I hear, but still. And then you look at other things that are sim similar that you guys want me to review and do stuff, and I just refuse to review it. If they give me money, they give me sponsorship, I don't care because it's not worth my time, right? I can work at Walmart for 10 hours and not review a subpar product 
anyway, that's it. Just be very careful. Uh, this is kind of an interesting uh, reason why that I, I don't think I would ever sell on TCG Player because a customer like this like would it would just drive me nuts. Now, I'm not saying the store behaved in the right way. The store got really passive aggressive incredibly fast when they got the five-star review. Uh, if this is correct, they received a five-star review and they kept, for whatever reason, taking the higher ground instead of saying, oh, okay, thank you for the five-star review, which was the point of doing it. Like, I'm pretty sure he got the five-star review. I lowered my rating, so did he ever... Did he ever, um, if I'll just give you the five stars, I can appreciate that you care about pleasing your customers that much. So at this point, I don't know if he actually gave the five star review, but I'm not sure that like the, it's just a lot of, I got into a store owner before because I made a video and the video said that uh, a he was selling the same foil jace right before ban announcements in his card like he was selling it in person and online which i think is kind of strange right like if you have one card why is it in two different locations like the store i used to go to had its online inventory online and it's um, in person inventory in person so the foil jace if you only had one of them if, if you're trying to sell it in person at fnm then you would not also have a copy online right it doesn't make any sense because this thing could happen all the time with this particular store giving its current technique and system would be if anyone ever bought anything in person then hope you hope that the a person is not buying it online at the same time because then the store are getting the same issue and you know you talk about honesty you talk about you know just it's so strange to me that this is their argument over nine dollars and 72 cents and both people are mad at each other uh, ten dollars is it's not a small amount of money but it's not worth this your time and it's not worth this particular, uh, I guess your happiness or your stress. It's not worth this stress because clearly this stressed out the store owner quite a bit and it also stressed out the customer quite a bit. Anyway, bye guys.